Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Miley here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for September 3rd, 2020, recorded around 10.34 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look out here across the tropics, first of all, we have the of what became Hurricane Nana last night as it made landfall near Belize in the northern coast of Honduras that has moved since inland over portions, really, of Belize and Guatemala. And really now most of this energy is going to transfer out into the eastern Pacific over the next couple of days where this might have a chance for some isolated reformation kind of in the eastern Pacific Basin. But strong upper level winds and lower than normal, um, really just kind of lower than normal um, expectancy of development is expected out across here across the tropical Pacific. So this is likely to hinder significant development. We're going to have lower sea surface temperatures and also, you know, just the strong upper level winds and generally unfavorable conditions are expected to kind of persist over the eastern Pacific. For the Atlantic Basin, however, we have a couple of things else to talk about besides Nana. Of course, now Nana, now that Nana is inland again, you know, the impacts will continue with tropical storm force winds all the way out to the coast. And also for, you know, gusty winds, mudslides, heavy rain, tornadoes, etc. So that kind of remains the big problem still. However, out across the rest of the Atlantic Basin, we are shaping up to probably be in a very active period for the next several weeks or so. First of all, the remnant circulation of Tropical Depression Omar is right here. Again, Omar is now moving off towards the north and east. It is still resisting about 50 knots a shear. It is still a tropical cyclone, but it is weakening and the convection has waned significantly. You can see a pretty exposed low level center in through here. Strong vertical wind shear, not going to really allow much development, but it's moving on out to sea. So this really isn't going to be a problem over the next several days. Then we turn our attention back across the rest of the Atlantic Basin where we have a lot of things going on. First of all, we have Invest Area 91L, which is this little tropical wave here that's kind of on the very far outer fringes of soon to be 92L. Still hasn't been designated, which is interesting, but I think it will later today or certainly by tomorrow. But regardless, this little wave right here is 91L. And you can see that right now there is a pretty exposed low level center of circulation. However, has gotten slightly better organized throughout the day, uh, throughout, you know, ten, or last night into this morning. More substantial convection has occurred right near the center, but it's still getting blown off towards the east we, or towards the northwest. We have some of that northwesterly or, I'm sorry, easternly shear that's being impinged on our storm, which is allowing for the convection to be blown off in towards the northeasterly direction. And again, that is just going to be kind of continuing throughout the next several days. You're not going to have a pretty favorable environment, at least in the short term for development. Now, one other thing that we have to take into careful consideration is how the overall effects kind of play out with a soon to be 92L because this does have uh, some questions here because there's the distinct possibility that soon to be 92 is going to merge here with 91 and these will kind of do a rendezvous basically and this wave just gets absorbed into this wave and then it kind of just creates one big tropical cyclone one wave that's just kind of a bigger uh tropical cyclone basically and this is something that we're going to have to watch kind of going forward as this is going to matter for the overall evolution of our two storms now regardless this is the National Hurricane Center look here at the tropical waves. First of all, again, you know, Nana and Omar out here. We're going to spend less time on these and more so focus today <clears throat> on this area out here. You notice that we have a fairly large area of convection and, and, and a large area of disturbances out here. First of all, 91L now has a 40% chance with soon to be 92 at a 70% and soon to be 93 uh, at a 20%, if I'm not mistaken. So all of these waves have some retrospective chance of developing into a tropical cyclone as we kind of go forth with time. And that is very important because that's going to matter pretty substantially 
as we head throughout the next several days or so. Now, eventually, these waves, again, are going to be moving due westward over the next couple of days, but there's a lot of questions as to how the ridge of high pressure out to the north kind of performs and what eventually concurs with it. So here's what the models think. This is for 91L, and you can see most of the model guidance today is still not any better than we saw yesterday, even in the morning. So most of our model guidance has kind of just a rendezvous, basically stalled system throughout the next 72 hours or so before finally either getting evicted in several different directions. So what this kind of leads me to believe is we're going to see some pretty significant interaction with soon to be 92L. We're just going to call it 92L for the sake of it. But with 92L, it's going to have some pretty good interactions with and it's going to have the potential to kind of get absorbed into 92L, uh, you know, and thus it's not going to really have a chance to be its own entity. However, if it does remain its own entity, the direction of which 91L will eventually go is very uncertain. With some models here indicating, especially the multi-model consensus, which is the TVCA, kind of just doing this weird kind of almost backwards uh, Z shape, basically, almost this kind of Z shape. Um, and that is a real possibility as time goes on um, that we try to end up getting that to happen. On the other, uh, you know, on the other hand, it is entirely possible that 91L gets absorbed into 92L. And you can see, I mean, it's a pretty big circulation that 92L has right now. And that is producing an expansive area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms. This area is going to take a lot more time to consolidate than an area like 91L. Now, the other big thing is you can see that we do have somewhat of a clear, drier air mass towards the north which also may put at least a little bit of a hamper on development with these two systems at least for the next day or two. So this is going to be something that we're going to have to watch and then we have another wave coming off of Africa now that will kind of move its way over here and have yet another chance to develop into a tropical cyclone. So all of these provide very real potentials over the next several days or so. Now as far as the intensity guidance, this is the early cycle guidance here, the 6C guidance at 1 o'clock this morning. And again, most of these models uh, suggest that really only about three of them take it into tropical storm intensity. Um, most notably, the shift form model, which is climatology and persistence. So basically not a valid model there. Now, the uh, DK ships and the ships model, retrospectively, those are basically the same models, just slightly different parameters. Uh, for land interaction or whatever, do bring it into tropical storm intensity. This is, again, a blend of a statistical and a dynamical model. The IVCN, the multi-model consensus, does make this a tropical storm within about five days or so. But the GEM, the CMCI, and the uh, AVIN models, retrospectively, do not bring this to tropical storm intensity and remain it as a weak disorganized wave and that's very important because that's a very real possibility especially if this ends up merging with 92L it cannot be its own specific entity so it's very important to understand that now for what it's worth this is the ship's diagnostic model and we've kind of showed this here in previous model or er, in previous discussions but generally what we're looking at here is the time, and this is in hours, relative to that we also have our uh, kind of position. This is zero hours out here, and as we go further off towards the right, we get out towards days four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So at the very end of the forecast, this is uh, day nine out here. And what we're looking at first is the shear. This is a knots, again, going from the same uh, left to right, general, generally with time. And right now you can see that there's a ton of shear in the overall environment. And at least for the next 36 hours, we see a gradual incline in the shear amounts before finally dropping off after 48 hours. Now, even after 48 hours, the difference is a little bit, we've seen a little bit of a difference today in the shear uh, forecasting than we did yesterday. Generally, there was a, an incline in shear or a decline in shear through 12 hours, 
followed by a subsequent incline, a subsequent decline, and another incline. Well, now we don't see that, and we see generally, we see an incline at least for the next 36 hours and holding steady, basically, followed by a pretty rapid decline in the shear, and by virtually days, uh, basically, by days uh, five through nine, we have virtually no shear in the environment with only seven knots at day five and two knots at day nine. So this is very important because this tells us that the overall environment, the wind shear is going to slowly decrease. And especially after 36 hours from now, by the time we get into next week, or, you know, by this weekend and early next week, this shear, especially really after 60 hours, is going to start to decline pretty rapidly. We should start to see a gradual, uh, basically this gradual um, organization trend really begin to go uh, over the next uh, couple of days. This is uh, hour 48. This is two days out. So after two days, we should start to see a gradual incline, assuming 91L remains its own entity. And also, putting in some assumptions there again, it, it's not necessarily, uh, it, it is not a 100% guarantee that this remains its own entity. But assuming it does, this is the 700 to 500 millibar relative humidity. This is the upper or basically the mid and upper levels of the atmosphere. And we notice that our humidity values right now, our relative humidity values, remain pretty modest at least for the next 18 hours, where we get uh, mid and upper 50s to low 60s through hour 18. After about hour 18 or so, from 24 hours all the way out to roughly about hour 144, where the shear starts to decline, we start to see a pretty favorable relative humidity pattern start to set up, uh, where we start to basically see these uh, relative humidity values in the upper 60s and even upper 70s across, uh, you know, hours really from hours 48 all the way through 96. Our favorable shear environments would occur in a time frame where the shear values would be relatively light in three gear. So basically, we have a pretty favorable environment at least throughout the next 144 hours from days, uh, really beyond days three and four, continuing on through about days uh, six and seven, we have a pretty favorable environment kind of setting up. After that point in time, however, the uh, values start to decrease once again, and we start to see an overall trend kind of back towards uh, a lower relative humidity with uh, the relative humidity values falling back off into the mid and upper 50s. So those values will kind of be waxing and waning, but generally the favorable, the most favorable environment is at least still several days away for 91L. So I don't expect to see any significant organization, at least in the time being so far. But again, there still could be. Now, for what it's worth, the rapid intensification process is here, at least for the next uh, 30 knots, 24 hours, is only 10%, which is a 1.4 times the climatology mean of 6.9. So again, it's not really a high chance. And again, the rest of the values absolutely zero percent so there really is no significant chance that this organizes pretty quickly and it seems like we will probably have a very low chance of any significant organization over the next several days but we could see some at least uh, beyond days five six seven eight and nine now what happens beyond this point in time is highly subjective to how the models are actually analyzing this. What we're looking at here is the GFS 500 millibar or the 850 millibar relative vorticity. This is the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And what we're looking at here is for these higher uh, red colors in here, these darker reds like you see with Nana and Omar and our other little disturbance out here. There's not really so much a disturbance, but just kind of some mid-latitude energy. But especially with Nana and Omar, we have these deeper reds, and that's indicating your higher cyclonic spin at the 5,000 foot level. 
So as we progress throughout time, we're going to move this out here to about hour 90. We'll go hour 120. So by hour 120, we have a couple of interesting things here in the GFS forecast. First of all, we have what seems to be about three different tropical waves uh, that are or three different tropical storms or whatever they are at this time approaching the uh, Cabo Verde Islands and then approaching the Lesser Antilles. Obviously, none of them threatening those areas right now. But we can see that there is a clear sign of tropical activity that is starting to heat up within the tropics down here. Now, as we progress throughout time, we'll go out to hour 180, we notice that there's several differences here. The GFS is spinning up a cyclone here, here, here. There's a bunch of different parameters for which these could occur in. And one of the things that we're going to have to look at here to kind of help us is the 850 or the 500 millibar geopotential height. Basically, this is the strength of the ridge at about 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. And what this tells us is our, again, the strength of the ridge, your highs and lows. So basically, everywhere we see these uh, higher red here, the, your darker red colors, this is your higher uh, geopotential height and your, you know, greens, yellows, and blues, and teals, that's your lower, your low pressure areas or your lower heights. So as we go on throughout about two days, or about to five days out, we can see that we have a hurricane here on the model near the Lesser Antilles, but we also have a pretty significant break in this ridge. And the reason for that is there's a mid-latitude energy associated with the remnants of a typhoon in the Western Pacific. These upper level remnants will be moving out across the jet stream pattern in the North Atlantic, subsequently weakening down this ridge. Now, there's a lot of caveats to this because the GFS has been propagating, if we go out here to about uh, seven or eight days out, we notice here this big like bowling ball like energy over here. Well, let's see, how did it look a couple of days ago? Uh, this is the 18Z run as of yesterday. We noticed we had a much stronger ridge, a weaker storm set out here, but we also had a much sharper trough axis in through here. The trough axis, really, the, this is the trough, and its axis kind of was like that. That's our axis there for the trough. This was degrading significantly that ridge. Now we kind of move that forward and you can see the overall propagation has been towards storms that are actually leading a little bit further westward, westernly. And we also have a sharper connection within this trough towards the western uh, coast there and over towards the eastern Pacific side and over on the west coast of America. So what this is kind of indicating to us is that the trough is uh, the trough axis and how this typhoon kind of interacts in the mid latitudes is very uncertain and there's a lot of changes that are going to occur and we saw a similar situation happen with Hurricane Florence back in 2018 we saw the same thing with Hurricane Irma in 2017 we saw this before we know where this goes so there is a potential and we can even note how this trough energy here is very slow to kind of occur and the general consensus is a stronger ridge further west and we get these storms that kind of in the end run are not as far to the basically as far to the north so you get a kind of a combination of different you know different opinions here now on the european model run here this is the euro and we'll move this out about you know 192 hours out this is the european showing a slightly stronger ridge solution in here this is a slightly stronger ridge solution you have three tropical cyclones that are in through here one that is north of puerto rico at this time at least in the model fields but we notice how there's a quick progression in the models. We'll go out here to 0Z September 1st. So this was about three days ago in the model field and it had a more substantial trough axis position through here. That's the trough axis there at the bottom of the trough. And it was significantly eroding this ridge. We go out to what the model showed yesterday and it showed a much more progressive flow with a stronger ridge. Subsequently, 0Z today showed much of the same with an even stronger ridge, 
with a ridge building back over the western, or I'm sorry, the eastern Atlantic, and a slightly stronger connection across throughout the entire uh, western and midwestern United States, all the way over to the coastlines there of California, Oregon, etc. So this leads me to believe that there is the potential that this could end up actually getting a little bit further west. And we can see the evolution even at hour 216 from September 2nd to September 3rd that the ridge is indeed a little bit stronger. The trough is actually a little bit further west. We know where these games have been played. Now, this is very far out in time, so these speculations are going to certainly change but it gives you a general overall consensus of that we just don't have a good general idea of what's going to happen quite yet. But you can definitely see that the progression from yesterday's run of the 0z euro to the 0z run of today's euro shows a much more progressive pattern with a slightly stronger ridge in place and these tropical cyclones are further west. Now, of course, this is going to bounce back and forth time and time over. Uh, but, of course, these model-to-model -model variabilities, you know, isn't so much right now what we're looking at. It's the overall trend. We go back out to hour 192. We move this out to September 1st again. You can just see the overall pattern change that has been occurring. And we move this back even to August 31st, the last couple of patterns and how they have overall changed in the model field they have changed pretty substantially in the model field on here on the euro. So this is something that we're going to have to take note of that the ridge is starting to build back in in the models and it is just something to be kind of mindful of. So this is something we're going to have to watch. Now, how does the uh, GFS parallel version kind of handle this? This is the newest version of the GFS that is going to be implement, uh, implemented in the next couple of months and we can start to see that the uh, models here again indicate much of the same uh, with these kind of variabilities within the model runs from time to time these these variabilities do occur but we can really see how they've kind of jumped around from time to time so not everything is set in stone and even the icon model, this is the, I think, the German model. This is five days out. And again, a tropical cyclone here, one here. Let's move this back about to 114 hours to see how the overall pattern has changed since the 0Z to the 06Z, slightly stronger ridge. You know, trough is a little bit further west, you know, etc. We know how this game has basically been played. And uh, we can see, certainly kind of see that we don't have everything that is, uh, you know, quite in there. So there is going to be a lot that we are going to have to watch as time kind of progresses. And you can kind of just see how, you know, the ridge is changing, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot that we're going to have to watch here. And again, not everything is set in stone, but the bottom line is that we are likely to see multiple tropical storms or hurricanes out here in the eastern part of the main development region throughout the next week or so, but any impacts to land is still very far out in time. But for folks here in the Lesser Antilles and anywhere within a hurricane-prone area, obviously needs to be monitoring the progress of these waves. All right, with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your morning and early afternoon. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I will talk to you guys later this afternoon. Have a great rest of your morning and early afternoon. I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys later this afternoon.